Okay, lesson 78. We're solving quadratic equations. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math! Okay, lesson 78. We're solving quadratic equations. This is part two. We talked about it before. Remember, there's three ways we can do it so far. We can solve by factoring if the quadratic is factorable. We can solve by completing the square and we can solve by using the quadratic formula. Let's just get right into it. Example one, solve 9x squared minus 25 equals zero. So we're going to solve by factoring to see if we can first. Well, is this factorable? Well, step to factoring. Number one, look for a greatest common factor. Nope. Number two, look for a difference of two squares. Difference means subtraction, so it's a subtraction problem. Got that going for it. Uh, two squares, yes, 9x squared is square rootable. Square root of 9x squared is 3x and the square root of 25 is five. So this is a difference of two squares, so let's factor it out. The way you factor it out, square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second, okay? Then we can figure out our x's that will make this zero. Remember the shortcut is this guy opposite of this guy over this guy. So the opposite of negative five would be five. So our two roots for this quadratic are negative five thirds and positive five thirds. Boom! Here's B, solve. Seven X squared equals 63. Well, the first step to solving by factoring is make sure they're all on the same side first. So we're gonna put seven X squared minus 63 equals zero. Now we're gonna solve by factoring, so now we're after gonna follow the steps to factoring, okay? First step is look for a greatest common factor. We do have one, it's seven. So take that out and you're left with x squared minus nine. And there's a beautiful difference of two squares. So seven times x plus three, x minus three equals zero. So x equals negative three and three. So there's no x that will make this seven zero. That's a constant. So we, we can really just ignore it. So the only x's that will make this equation zero are negative three and three, okay? Make sure you check it, see if it works. Seven times negative three squared is 63 and seven times positive three squared is 63. So boom, it works. All right, example two, moving right along. So this is technically a cubic equation, but it's a lot easier because we can factor some stuff out. All right, so everything's all on one side of the equation already, so that's nice. So we're gonna take out common factors. So 10 and x you can take out. So x squared minus one. All right, that's a beautiful difference of two squares. So let's factor it, x plus one, x minus one equals zero. So our x values are negative one, zero, because that's what will make this factor zero, and then positive one. Example three. We're gonna solve this guy, x to the fourth minus 16. All right, I'm not afraid of you, crazy four exponent guy. First step to factor, look for a greatest common factor. There's nothing. Second is a difference of two squares. It is. Here's a difference of two squares. So square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second equals zero. So now you can keep factoring because this one you can't factor, but this one is still another difference of two squares. So here's our factor so far. This one is done. So that is what we call prime because you can't factor it anymore. And this guy is x plus two, x minus two equals zero. Okay, so our x's, well, what x's will make this zero? Well, let's, let's set it to zero and solve. So x squared, if I subtract four from both sides, x squared, that's ugly, 
equals negative four. Square root of negative four, you can't do that, but you can take out an i, because it's a negative, so we're gonna call it plus or minus two i. So the, the shortcut when you're, when you're taking the square root of a negative number, just pull that negative out and make it an i, and then try to square root anything left in there. Here's our complex roots. So you have positive or negative two i, but you also have your real roots, x equals negative two and positive two. So it's good to keep these separate. I mean, you could say that the roots are just positive and negative two i, negative two, and then positive two. But it's always good to keep the imaginary separate from reality. It's a good rule in life too. So that's example three. So example three B says verify these roots graphically. That sounds bad, graphically, that's weird. So here's our equation, x to the fourth minus 16 equals zero. Same thing, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph this. So let's go over to our graph, our geogebra, geogebra.org, great website, lots of calculators. So we're gonna type it in, x to the fourth minus 16 equals y. Okay, we'll slow down there. So you can see that our roots where y equals zero are at negative two and two. So you can always plug that into your calculator and see where it crosses the x-axis where y equals zero. All right, example four says solving a quadratic equation using perfect squares. All right, now this is kind of exciting because you start off with this crazy equation. So nine X squared minus 12 X plus four minus X squared plus 10 X plus 25 equals zero. So when in doubt, factor it out. That always makes me feel better. This just happens to be a square trinomial. So let's just, for the fun of it, say 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. When you FOIL that out, you get 9x squared, negative 6x, negative 6x is negative 12x, and then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So that's a square trinomial. This is a square trinomial. Well, we knew that because 10 divided by 2 squared is 25. Okay, so how do we factor that? X plus five, X plus five equals zero. Okay, so now we have a difference of two squares. <laughs> Cause look, here's a square minus another square. So how do we factor that? Well, the square to the first plus the square to the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. So this is three X minus two plus X plus five times three X minus two minus X plus five, okay? So remember with, with this minus here, it's a little complicated. So we're gonna chicken scratch these guys so now since everything is addition we can ignore the parentheses so we're gonna simplify inside the parentheses here so 3x and x is 4x so we're adding we're not multiplying so we're just combining like terms so 3x and x make a 4x and the negative 2 and a 5 make a 3 okay and that's all times all right, that's a 3x. It looks like a negative 3, but it's not. So 3x and negative x is 2x. And then negative 2 and negative 5 is negative 7. So that equals 0. Now we can solve for our x's. So this x is going to be negative this guy over that guy. And this x is going to be opposite of negative 7, which is 7 over 2. Remember, if you don't remember that shortcut, just set it equal to zero, four X plus three equals zero, and then solve 
four x. So x equals negative three fourths. All right. So those are our solutions. That was, I mean, that was kind of satisfying to just see all that come together. It was nice. So that's it for lesson 78. We'll do more on 79, but uh, yeah, have fun with this homework. It's gonna be great. Black man!